Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Latcher with Spring Hill Equine and Straight from the Horse Doctor's Mouth. And today we're going to talk about Cushing's, also known as PPID. Cushing's, again also known as PPID, is a very common problem that we see in horses over the age of about 15. First, let's talk about why it's called Cushing's and why we say also known as PPID. So Cushing's is the term used for the syndrome in humans and dogs. Like most medical syndromes, it's named after someone named Cushing. And it just is a shorthand term for what's going on. Now the difference in horses is that they have a different part of their pituitary gland affected. Humans and dogs have one area, horses have the middle part. And so that is where we get PPID, pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction. Pars intermedia is our fancy term for in the middle because we can't just say in the middle, we have to say pars intermedia. So that is why in horses, it is technically correct to call it PPID. And that's why you may see it listed as both Cushing's and PPID. In horses, the problem ends up being a loss of dopamine receptors. And the way the pituitary gland works is the dopamine acts as a break on the pituitary's gas pedal. So the pituitary has the gas running at full all the time. It is trying to drag race down the interstate and dopamine comes in and says, okay, whoo, let's take it down a notch. As horses age, some things can happen in their body that cause those dopamine receptors to not respond as well and to not be as plentiful. And so we take the the gas or the, we take the brake pedal off and we have the gas going. So we have a gland that is going boo. And that is why we will sometimes talk about it as a tumor. It is a tumor and the, the pituitary gland is getting bigger. It's not a tumor like cancer where that tumor has the potential to go to other places in the body or it takes over other tissues. It's just literally getting bigger because the gas is on and there's no brakes. The other problem we have in horses is unlike humans and dogs who release primarily ACTH, horses can release up to 5,000 different hormones from this pars intermedia section of the pituitary. It's responsible for status quo. So it tells your horse they're hungry, they're thirsty, winter's coming, summer's coming, they should grow more foot, they should have more uh, increased contractions of their GI tract. It tells them everything they need to know about how to run their system in a day. And because we can have up to 5,000 different combinations of those hormones released, it's hard for us to look at any horse and say, yep, this one has Cushing's or PPID. We have some things that we look at for typical signs. And you may have heard about a long hair coat. You can see where not knowing if it's summer or winter, you don't know if you should grow hair or not grow hair. Here's a, a little pro tip here. That long hair coat is often one of the last symptoms we see in PPID in horses. And so it's not a reliable indicator that that's what you have going on. The very first indicator we often see is that your horse is just not quite right. Maybe they're drinking more, drinking less, eating slower, not performing quite as well. You may be wondering, do I have something going on? You know, is there something wrong with my horse? But you have sort of this vague sense of unease and you feel uncomfortable potentially talking to us and saying, I don't know what's wrong, but I would say something is wrong. If your horse is in the, eight, the 15 year old age range or older, it's a good indication that we should probably do a PPID test. So what does that test look like? It's an easy, easy blood draw. All we do is go take a little tiny sample of blood in, for most horses, we're gonna talk about why that gets complicated in a second. And we are going to look for a hormone called ACTH. Now that is mostly what is released in, in dogs and humans. It is released in large quantities in horses as well. It's just not the primary driver, but we can use it to test. And so for in the fall, which for horses is between August 1st and December 15th-ish in the Northern Hemisphere, then we're going to just pull that ACTH and we're gonna see what that number looks like. If we're in the spring, we may pull just that ACTH or we may do a test called TRH, which is thyroid releasing hormone. And it's what we call a stimulation test. So we give a shot of this thyroid releasing hormone and then we pull an ACTH and we see what happens. In a normal horse, not much happens. We get a little increase, but not much. In a horse that's positive for PPID, 
we get an increase that goes whoo through the roof and we say, okay, this horse actually has PPID or Cushing's. So that's our main testing method. However, I will say that we also have a high index of suspicion on a lot of horses when we look at them. And we say, okay, do we see that all of a sudden we have an older horse that has now developed what we call regional adiposity, which is just fat in strange places. So do they have fat on the crest of their neck? Are they getting abnormal fat deposits over the top of their tail or just in general on their top line? If you've ever been around donkeys, you'll see that they like to really lay fat down on their top line, uh, you know, on their backs in particular. And some of these positive horses will do that as well. Now, there's a common misconception that all horses who have PPID also have some degree of insulin issue or they have trouble metabolizing sugars. That is not true of every one of them. And so we need some of this testing for us to help decide what's going on. But if I see this regional adiposity, it's gonna massively increase my index of suspicion. And we're definitely gonna have a, con a conversation about PPID. The other thing we look at really closely is the feet. And what we're looking for are what we call divergent growth lines. And this can be an indication of low level laminitis. And again, your horse may not have given you any indication. Maybe they walked out of the stall a little foot sore one day. Maybe they didn't. But when we look at their foot, we can see that the lines of growth on the foot are wider apart at the heel than they are at the toe. And that is definitely an indication of laminitis. It may not be telling you they have laminitis, but it's in there. That's gonna tell us that we would like to take x-rays or radiographs of this horse's feet and see how everything looks. One of the biggest, biggest, biggest problems we have with PPID horses, yep, everybody thinks about the long coat, but laminitis is a huge problem for these horses. And it is the thing that the treatment helps prevent the most. So while we may have difficulty managing the hair coat with treatment, the studies have shown that therapy significantly, like greater than 90%, reduces the chances of laminitis. So if I see those things, I'm gonna have an index of suspicion as well, and I'm gonna say, let's, let's talk about testing your horse. Treatment for this disease is basically, there's one drug available on the market, and in the United States, there's one maker. And that is a drug called pergolide, and it works on those dopamine receptors to keep them around longer, and it helps the dopamine act for longer. So it helps that break be a little bit more effective. The brand name is Percend, and in the United States, uh, and much of the world at the moment, to be honest, it's the only option we have. There are a number of marketed versions of pergolide. They're all what we call a compounded product. Pergolide does not handle compounding well. It must be kept in very specific circumstances to keep its efficacy. It can't be exposed to sunlight, normal air, moisture, you name it, it doesn't like it. So it's packaged in a blister pack with nitrogen, not even room air, so that it can be kept efficacious for a long period of time. So again, if you're looking at other options, I'm afraid there aren't any. Percent is your, your best and only option in, in the United States anyways. So hopefully this helps if you have concerns about your horse having Cushing's or PPID. Our number one risk factors are over the age of 15 and having been overweight. If you've got questions, give us a call, text, or email, and we'll be happy to discuss with you if maybe testing is right for you and your horse.